Good evening, guys. Welcome to the channel, or at least it's it's evening here where I'm at. I'm Caleb, and in this video, we're going to be doing a walk around of my 2021 Bronco. Now, we're here at Tuttle Creek Campground, where I've been wanting to go for a long time. Not necessarily this campground. This is more of a mall crawling campground. It's paved all the way up to the campsites, but it's in Alabama Hills. We're at spot 28. If you want just a nice, easy drive and be able to see all the hills and all the beautiful country here, Spot 28, right up here at the foothills and the mountains. You've got the snow in the back. It's nice and dry here. Beautiful scenery all around. And we're just a short drive from all the stuff Alabama Hills has to offer. But we're here for the Bronco. So I've been meaning to do this video for a while. We're just going to do a brief overview of my Bronco. We're not going to get into the, the details on the specs and the, the, the interior review. That's done in like a million other videos. This is my Bronco. What I've done to it. So to start, I will give you a brief rundown of what I have. I have a 2021 Big Bend Sasquatch four-door with the soft top, 2.3 motor, automatic transmission, and uh, that's about it as far as what I got. I do have the mid package as well, heated seats, got to have those. So to start, we're going to get around to the exterior modifications, what I've done on the outside, what you can see. Then we're going to go to the performance modifications, which is what's underneath, what I've done to strengthen and build the up and upgrade the internals underneath and in the engine bay. And then we're going to go show you what's inside, what I've done on the inside to increase the functionality of what I do. And my build is not done. It's going to change as we go. I've got 37s coming, but stay tuned and I'll show you what we got going on. It's, it's pretty cool. So first we're going to start with the front. So the most obvious things that stand out are going to be the front rough country bumper and the Project X light bars. Project X light bars. Sorry, I can't talk. I don't know why my lips are all trapped from Kena the hammers. I got dust down my throat, but we're going to get through this guys. Okay. Uh, so let me show you what we got going on with uh, the front bumper to, be, to begin with. Wake up. we have going on with this bumper is like I said the rough country high clearance bumper I bought it on a whim thinking it would be you know a cheap but easy alternative for the Broncos plastic bumper that mine came with until I found something that I really liked when it got it I have a review on the bumper and the installation you can watch that it was a pain to install it really was but the after whatever you call it the final look worked really well and I actually like after using this bumper hitting it on the rocks you can see I don't know there's some scrapes there I actually smacked my light hit that pretty hard I've hit the winch mount a bunch it takes the hits like a champ it looks good and it keeps going like I've had no issues with it I love it I have uh, the rough country light bar 7,000 lumens I have the rough country shackle mounts that bolt onto the frame with several nice big bolts so that's strong i pulled out a lot of vehicles with those i have the rough country uh fog lights as well as their floods with the amber covers you'll also notice i have the rough country hidden winch mount this thing is awesome i love the placement of the winch i don't like the big chin look i don't like something sticking up in front of the grill this has worked well for me i do go in the rocks a lot deer valley moab uh, we just came from Kena the Hammers. Like we do a lot of rock crawling in the Bronco and it's had no issues. I have a worn winch, the uh, Evo, the 10S Evo, something like that. I pulled out at least 10 vehicles, including a, an old FJ80 that was all the way nose down into a river. So it works really well. Had no issues with that either. Originally I did have the rough country winch and my first water crossing, it shorted out. 
So now I replaced that with the worn winch, multiple water crossings, no issues. Water doesn't hurt it, neither does snow. And then uh, we'll move on to the next thing. If you look down here, you'll see I have the Bronc Buster braces. I also have the bushing on the driver's side as well for the steering rack. It's held up well, no complaints. Can't really talk much about it. You guys already know Bronc Buster and what he's about. Really good product. I can't recommend enough. I would just suggest don't upgrade your tie rods just for the sake of upgrading your tie rods. Those are designed to be a weak link. A weak link. So if you're going to upgrade your tie rods, also do your steering rack as well. Up top, you're going to see my Project X lights. It uses the RTR light bar with the Project X FF70 spotlights. They are 3,800 lumens each. Puts out a total of 19,500 lumens. They are hecka bright. I've used them at the Project X night run they invited me to just yesterday. A lot of trails at night, a lot of snow runs. Fantastic. It goes way out. The spotlights are great. They also, it's not just like, you know, spot beams. It does flood out a little bit and cover some of the areas on the side of the road as well. And they go, like I said, they go far. I can't recommend enough. I've been on the Project X night run, like I said, talk to those guys, really good people, really responsive. They make a great product and they are really into the Bronco community, but not just the Bronco community. You can put their stuff on Jeeps, Forerunners, you know, whatever you want, you can put it on. I'm gonna be running some of their stuff on my paddy wagon that I'm building, so stay tuned for that. I am an affiliate with them, so if you use my code, you will get 10% off anything on their website, so check them out. Project X Off-Road, link in the description. Use promo code GCBRONCO, 6G. That'll also be in the description. It'll get you 10% off, like I said, and it also helps me out. I don't get any money for this. I paid full price for the light bar before becoming an affiliate. So I'm only joining their program because I like what they do, not because they asked me. So keep that in mind. Project X, check them out. New company, great stuff. They're working with Lauren Healy and Von Gittin Jr. as well. And you know what? You don't always have to go expensive. These bad boys, Harbor Freight Special, 80 bucks for the pair. Factory wiring, hooked right up to the Harbor Freight wiring. Use the aux switches, no problem. Yes, I have the annoying Ford cowling issue. It doesn't seem to ever want to stay in. But the lights, they're great, 80 bucks. They're 2,200 lumens each. Eventually I'll upgrade them to the Project X pods once they come out. But these I've been using for a year and two months. No yellowing, no issues. They actually worked in some ways better than my Harbor, uh, sorry, better than my Roof Country ones. So no complaints there. Okay, next up you'll see that we have these KBD fender flares. Now I have an install video on those as well. I'm not crazy about the fit and finish. We're going to be dealing with that. I just threw them on before Keen of the Hammers. But they do open up the fender well quite a bit. Give it a really good look. I like it. I just got to fix some fitment issues. They're $350 for all four. That's a really good price. And yeah, my Bronco's dirty. I have not cleaned it since Keen of the Hammers. Next up, going inside the fender well, we have the DV8 fender liners the inner liners these i got from dv8 for 50 percent off i can't recommend them personally for the price they ask but they do give you clearance up and to the sides i i was making a review on it unfortunately my 37s are back ordered but in essence they give you about an inch up half an inch back and like a quarter inch forward now, for some reason on my stock suspension, I have a leveling kit, but I am rubbing something here on the whoops. I was hitting some whoops at high speed and something is hitting here. I'm not sure what. And it's stock suspension, like I said, except for a one inch leveling kit to offset for the winch. But they look good. They do well. I don't have any real complaints about them other than the price. We do have a promo code with them as well. 10% off DV8. Type in GC Bronco. That does not get me anything, that just gives you a discount. Next up, we have these sliders. Now, a company that's local to me custom made these for me when I first got the Bronco before anything else came out. 
They're nothing special. They work well. They're bolted to the frame. They got the two by four steel right here with the tube coming out. They've taken some really serious hits as you can see and they keep trucking. They do the job. Eventually I might get something that sticks a little bit further out from the body line as you can see. It doesn't stick out quite as far as I want, but it gets the job done. It's worked well for me and I've I've abused them and used them pretty heavily. Okay, now we're on to something that's a little near and dear to me, Gold Country Broncos. Now you've heard me talk about Gold Country before. I'm not gonna bore you with it any more than I need to. Just understand it is a Facebook group in the Northern California area for Bronco owners. We actually off-road our vehicles. We have fun doing so. Check us out if you wanna have fun and you're in the area. Now I wasn't sure whether or not to put this in the interior part or the exterior part. I'll probably do a little bit of both, but I have a Midland antenna right here. It's for my GMRS radio, which I'll show later. But the Midland antenna is connected using a trail racks bracket. Works pretty well. It connects or it goes down right here and then goes into the engine. I'll show you that in a minute. In the back, we're still pretty stock. I have a metal cloak rear bumper on the way. We have a uh, trail hitch receiver. Don't want to show the interior yet. Trasheroo, just got that recently for this KOH trip. I've used it a lot to haul firewood and trash. And that's pretty much it for the exterior. I did also do a PPF with Sunco protective films. All that you see right there is covered in PPF. It's a clear cover. It takes the scratches great. Nothing's on the paint. All right, I wasn't lying. I'm currently on a trip, so my Bronco is messy. But you see, it's pretty basic inside. I haven't done a lot of modifications. Biggest one that stands out is the 67 Designs bar, just going straight into the quarter by 20 Bronco mount. I got this uh, cell phone magnet. And then for the paddle mic, I super glued a magnet on that from Amazon and it goes right on. The only time it's come off is with whoops, like severe whoops, it's bounced off. But other than that, it stays on in the rock crawling trails and all that other stuff. That comes down and it goes into here. And then I locked that, but let me unlock that really quick. All right, actually I can't uh, show it. It's not gonna work very well, but Essentially, I have my cable running down. It comes underneath here, goes around there, and behind the glove box, I have my GMRS 15 watt radio. Now that radio is uh, mounted using a mountains to metal bracket that puts it right there inside behind the dash. It's a perfect spot, it's out of the way. All the controls and speakers and uh, all that stuff is in the paddle mic. I love that setup, it's worked really well for me. Coming around the back, we have all of our storage stuff. We've got the Ford table I got installed after the fact. We have my uh, Molly pouch for all my airing down, airing up equipment. Got my Boulder Tools kit, just in case, with some valve stuff in there. In the back, again, messy. I have my tool kit. I bring this on most of my trails. It just includes a few necessities. In here, underneath, in that thing. Let's see if I can get it for you. We have my tie rods and a few tools for the tie rods. Always carry extra of those. I have the JCR Molly mount system, the full, both windows, the front pet protector thing, and their upper shelf. I really love this system. They don't make it like this anymore, which really upsets me, but. This system works very well. I've got my hatchet mounted there. Up here, I keep all my recovery equipment. I have it tied down with these bungee cords so it doesn't fall out when I bounce it around. I have my first aid kit temporarily placed here. I've got my one Tigris chairs, one on each side. Those stay in my Bronco at all times along with the recovery equipment. I have three radios for my buddies in case they don't have one on the trails. I keep those here as, as well. Also, you'll see I have my Oracle light. 
I have a video on that as well. It works really well. Check out that video. But that's honestly, for the most part, what I've done on the interior. Like I said, the interior doesn't have much. I do also have this Maybet seat protector backing. That's been extremely useful with my dog. And all this stuff, as you can see, like I, I use the heck out of my Bronco. It's all scraped up. It's not clean. The plastic's gouged. My paint's chipped. Like I'm, I'm using this thing quite a bit. See, my Bronco gets use, but I love it. And it loves me, kind of. Also, I did not know that the Big Ben Sasquatch did not come with factory skid plates or trailing control arm bracket plates either. So I thought Sasquatch included all that. Apparently it doesn't. So I went to the same shop that did my sliders. They're no longer in business, unfortunately, but they actually put those on there for free for me, which I really appreciated. So I got free trailing arm control brackets, just a metal plate they welded on. And uh, again, like I said, they did my slider. All right, underneath the Bronco, I've got the Ford factory skid plates that I purchased separately and installed. They've taken a heavy, heavy beating. That one's bent up. I need to get something different for there. I don't like that. For the transmission pan, I have a Maybet transmission pan, which bolts right up with the Ford factory skid plates. 120 bucks on Amazon, can't beat the price. It's aluminum, has drain holes, and you do not lose clearance. Now, at one point I had RCVs, but they were recalled and RCV has not released any new axle shafts yet. I was talking to Nick from Dana Spicer and they do have their new axles out. I will be probably getting those and trying those out in conjunction with the 37s that are coming in April. Now in the back, as we go underneath, you'll see I have the Bronk Buster skid plates for my shock mounts. I busted those quite heavily, as you can see, pretty uh, dinged up and they've held up just fine. And then I have the next Venture Motorsports diff cover. A lot of people say, oh, the, Bronc, the Bronco uh, rear diff is plenty strong. You don't need a diff cover. That's true. It is very, very strong. But I would rather my diff not look like the rest of my brackets that are all bent and smashed. Okay, the engine bay. Nothing fancy. Ignore my really bad wiring. But essentially, we have a 2.3 engine. Nothing fancy. It does have the Ford Performance Tune. I have a video on that as well. Check that out. I have the Boomba blow-off valve. And before y'all poke fun at me at for this, I and mean, you can, I don't care. I did this because people were making fun of my Harbor Freight pod lights. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm trying to save money, do things slowly, make sure I do it the right way before I just throw money at things. People gave me some crap for those pod lights. How dare you put Harbor Freight pod lights on American vehicle, American icon. Like, well, you know what? Screw you. I got a turbo. Y'all gonna hear my turbo. It's there, blow off valve. I have my ARB single compressor mounted in with the real truck, whatever it's called, bracket. Love that, placement's perfect, works very well. I have all my wiring, all messy. If you know someone that does wiring, hit me up. I would like it done better. But you have that cable coming in. Not crazy about the routing of that, but it works for now. And that goes in through the grommet that Ford has back there. You just pass through all your cables into the dash. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it for the engine bay. So that's it for the Bronco guys. Like I said, I haven't done a ton of stuff to it. It's been slow over the past year just working on waiting for certain parts to come out. I'm waiting for suspension. I'm waiting for tires. I'm waiting for axles. I'm really hoping Carly comes out with some good stuff. They're just taking forever. So stay tuned. There will be 37s on there. There will be a better traveling suspension. And we are going on the Rubicon this year. So, you know, we'll see. We might have a broken Bronco by the end of the year. We'll see though. So keep following. I appreciate y'all. This is, um, just a joy for me to do to be out here filming 
my adventures, my journeys, what I'm doing with the Bronco, what I'm doing with the Jeep, what I'm doing with the paddy wagon. Those are coming in future videos. Stay tuned for that. I mean, look at this place. It's, it's insane. Like, I just get to come out here and have fun. I'm not making any money from this. No one's paying me. I'm just enjoying my time, having a blast, doing what I'm, what I'm passionate about. And hopefully these uh, chapped lips and dust will, uh, will go away. She looked just fine. Always bring me whiskey and wine. Every single morning and dinner and night. Everything she do, she do just right. But when I say well, what you want me to do, she say it's just one thing that I want from you. A little bit of rock, a little bit of roll, a little bit of rock, a little bit of roll, a little bit of rock, a little bit of roll, any bit, little bit of rock and roll. Looking swell, spinning around.